<laughs> you were excited about attending the world championships even just to watch because it's in the United States. Sorry, Sugar Boo Bear. It's only if you have your invite. It's probably because it's going to be in another office space, just like they did in Japan. <sighs> First, uh, Europe doesn't get Speed Duel product, and it looks like the game is slowly dying due to lack of events. Now it looks like the game is just slowly dying in general. This is not a good look for the game, and it really has me worried. Hello ladies and gentlemen, that is not clickbait. Be sure to hit the boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button because it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here. But yes, destroy the ever living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button because we are climbing up the 1400 ladder as it looks like Yu-Gi-Oh! is climbing down the toilet bowl, ladies and gentlemen. Um, all jokes aside, I really do hope you're having a fantastic day. I really do appreciate all of the support. All jokes aside... I wanted to see how the community reacted to this first before I talked about it because I saw it yesterday on Twitter, aka X or Y or Z, whatever it's called now. <laughs> um, Konami has made this announcement about Worlds, and in case you didn't know, it's actually going to be in the United States this year. I believe it was, what, Seattle or Washington, something like that. Maybe they're both in the same place. I don't know. I didn't take geometry. I know I said geometry instead of geography, but... <laughs> Looking at what they said uh, 10 hours ago on Facebook, you can also find this on Twitter as well. For those looking to attend the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship 2024 in Seattle, Washington, can you tell I didn't read this beforehand? Whoops. Uh, on September 7th and 8th, we wanted to share that it is an exclusive event open only to duelists that qualify to compete this year. Stay tuned for info on how you can support the WCS duelists at the local level. Who gives a shit? So... For those of you who think, Avery, what's the big deal? Like, you and myself, we're probably not going to have our invite to Worlds, right? Like, Worlds is the creme de la creme, like going to the Super Bowl level of Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, it's a very big deal, right? I want to put this in perspective on what's been done in the past. Worlds one year, I don't remember, I think it was the year that Eric Christensen uh, played Blue Eyes, like where basically you could only play Blue Eyes, like it was the only deck able to be played. Uh, so what was that, like 2015, 2016? My dad and I actually went down to Orlando just to watch Worlds. And in the venue next door, there were other events going on. Like I think there was like a regional going on and like there were vendors and stuff like that. And then you had the main like Worlds competitors in like the main area where like you could sit quietly and watch and whatever. And you could meet the voice actors. You could meet the voice actor for Seto Kaiba, uh, Little Yugi slash uh, Yami Yugi, Dan Green. Um, you could also, since the Dark Side of Dimensions movie was coming out, you could get in a big-ass line to um, audition to be a voice actor in the movie. And I actually did that. Like, I, it was um, the scene where, if you've seen the Dark Side of Dimensions, when Joey's coming down, like, with a bicycle or whatever down the the road and it's like on a downward slope and you play the role of a police officer where he gets hit and he's like don't you know the speed limit and uh if you ended up getting chosen then you were gonna be uh voicing that character and it, it was really really cool to at least go do that we also at that particular worlds uh you could meet the ceo of konami of japan which was actually a really fine ass looking young lady from japan i'm not gonna bullshit you about that <laughs> <laughs> but she actually spoke English, which was actually kind of cool. I didn't really say much to her. I just basically said, hey, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, it, it was actually kind of weird because, like, one of the judges came in or, like, one of the, the guys working the event was like, hey, you know, be respectful. This is the Konami CEO. Don't say things like WTF or oh, my God or holy shit. Like, it was kind of weird. I guess it's just because of the culture or whatever. I don't know. It, it was just really weird. Um, but like, I really didn't say much to her. I basically just said, hi, nice to meet you. And she said, hi, very nice to meet you. Thank you for playing our game. Uh, did you want to meet the voice actors? And I was like, uh, yes, absolutely. You know, thank you again for being here. And then I went and got, uh, the secret rare Exodia, uh, not the DDS one, but the, it was like out of like the master collection book, whatever, got that signed by Dan Green. And I got a blue eyes signed by, uh, the voice actor for Seto Kaiba. His name escapes me at this point. All of that to say, there's a lot to do at Worlds 
when it is done correctly. Like, even just the things that they put up. Like, they had in, like, a display case, like, complete sets of, like, old school ghost rares and ultimate rares and, like, Stardust Dragon, Dark Magician. All of these really cool things that, like, even if you weren't competing in Worlds, there was something for everybody to do. And it was in, like, a big venue convention center where, like, there was also, like, a... um, I got like a gun show going on where like you could buy and sell guns and stuff. And I think there was like a monster truck thing going on. Like there was a lot of other things going on. Like it was worth it to go. And now it's like, there's no reason to go probably because it's going to be held in a little office space again. Um, but looking at some of the comments here, um, shout out to uh, my buddy. I think his name is Murph muffin online. Um, but shout out to my buddy Murphy. Uh, and he says here, was holding out on jumping ship to Pokemon. Think this is the final straw for me between the false promise of using 2019 NAWCQ invites to play in the next NAWCQ that existed to just the overwhelming cost to be even mildly relevant in the game. That's a good point. Uh, y'all might as well not have even announced the location for Worlds and say it will be at an undisclosed location that only the invitees get to find out when they qualify. I don't know about all that with the 2019 invites, and one of y'all is going to have to let me know down in the comments, but I guess like they didn't honor the fact that if you got your invite in 2019, then the next time that they had Nats, because we had COVID and all that, that you were going to be able to go. I guess they didn't honor that, which is shocking. Um, looking at some of the other comments here, like a lot of people were really upset about this. A uh, way to gatekeep newer fans and returning fans from the game, Konami sarcasm, in case you're too dense to notice. Yeah, like, uh, they completely dropped the ball. Like, anyone who lives, like, in the Seattle area would be like, hey, there's Yu-Gi-Oh! Worlds going on. Like, let's go watch it. Let's go see what happens. Like, you literally make it an advertisement. Like, that's all you have to do. I don't know why, like, you would go about it this way. Someone else said, I think after this year, it's safe to say that we can all be done with Yu-Gi-Oh! all together. It was an incredible 20-plus year run, but at this point, the game, the politics, the venues, the judges, the cards, and the pricing has put this game in a sour place. I really don't think that this person is wrong. Uh, this person said it's only going to keep getting worse. Uh, this some this person said, yeah, and this is why other card games are about to take over. Another person said, I already transitioned out of Yu-Gi-Oh! almost entirely. Unless some dramatic change happens with the game, I'm probably going to be done playing it for good. Uh, but, but, but someone else said, Tokyo Dome and U.S. can't attend Worlds. Hoping Nationals and Texas will be everything worth it. Someone else said, I thought this came from a satire account with a missed chance to make an amazing event for your community. Uh, someone else said, extremely huge L. <laughs> this person said, it. April 1st is a couple weeks away. Save the joke for then. That's a good point. Uh, is this because the event's being held in an office space again? <laughs> ah, that is true. Uh, someone else said, good luck with that. Uh, whoever is running the NA Konami events, uh, it's a GIF saying you're fired. Uh, this person said, honestly, disappointing would have been cool to be able to go and have friends support you there as well. This person said, LOL, I was interested in the game for the first time in years because of this. No reason to pick it back up now. It just keeps going and going. Um, again, obviously, it's a very exclusive thing to go to Worlds, right? But the fact that you would have the ability to go and to at least watch or to, I don't know, have voice actors show up and sign cards. I don't know, have Dan Green sign your Dark Magician Girl or the, your Seal of Boy Calcos, like whatever, right? Like you make it something for everybody. You make it advertisable. Like you do all these things. Why would you not want to do that? And this brings up the bigger conversation of it really looks like Konami is going through some kind of restructuring that they're just not telling anybody about um, or the game is slowly dying. And honestly, especially in a format like this where luckily now the prices of Snake Eye cards have kind of died down where if you want to play like a Snake Eye Fire King deck, you're not paying $1,000. You're paying maybe after tax and all that $970, $980. I mean $20 away from $1,000 what's really the point, Um, not even including, you know, staples and things like that. But the format's in a really bad place, and it's not looking good for Yu-Gi-Oh. I would say that this is one of the worst times in Yu-Gi-Oh history, as much as I hate to say that, and especially when they're celebrating the 25-year anniversary, even though that seems to be going on for the past five years, it seems. Um, But... Many people will say, well, back in like 2008, 2009, when Upper Deck was getting sued by Konami and all this other stuff, that seems like when the game would have died. And I do agree, I was around in that time. But being so, I guess, deft compared to what they've done in the past, 
and then you don't, that's not even factoring in how few events there are in Europe and how the Speed Duel Midterm Paradox box is an American or a U, uh, North American exclusive product. It's not going to Europe. It makes you wonder what's going on. And it's a big question mark that I'm sure we're never going to get an answer to because Konami is just so quiet about everything. Makes me wonder what's going to happen on the next balance. Will we even see one within another month? Will we not see one? Will we go into nationals with a tier zero format and possibly a couple FTKs running around? It's really got me worried. It's very concerning and I don't know what's going to happen. But um, as long as you're not spending money on the game and you're saving your money and I mean... If you're investing in stuff that's going to go up in value like any 25th anniversary reprint boxes or rarity collections or a Kaiba briefcase and the stainless steel Egyptian gods, I think you're going to be okay. But the future is seeing very grim, very, very grim. I may have to make another video separate about that. But guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. Um, Yeah, this is is some baby back bullshit. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.